When I was in the ninth grade and sitting in an accounting class, I didn't pay much attention to what was going on. I didn't want to be an accountant, so why would I? Our accounting teacher recommended that we all get the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. The book talks about financial independence and building wealth. And the way to do this, the book says, is to invest your money into investment schemes, real estate investing, stocks, you get the picture. But obviously because I didn't want to become an accountant and I thought that's what they were trying to get us to be, I wasn't listening to the investment advice. All I saw were kids looking through newspapers, finding stocks, and didn't really know what it meant. Admittedly, some of the students actually did follow her advice and became investors from an early age. But I followed my own path and didn't really think about investment ever again. That was until I became a university graduate. After I graduated and got a job and subsequently started earning a salary, I took a look at my bank account and the interest I get from my bank and I saw a very grim number. So I thought, how do I take the money that I'm making on a salary and grow it exponentially? How do I take the little that I am getting and turn it into something that I could retire on? And that's when I came back to that word that that grade 9 accounting teacher tried to teach us. This week on Quintessential Talks, we talk investing. Everybody is aware of these sites and everybody wants to invest, but, but they don't know how. And they don't have, well, easily accessible information for the layman to, to create that sort of uh, culture of, well, investing. <laughs> Essentially, they need, to, they need to go out of their way just to make a difference because the difference in their own lives using investments because it's so difficult to understand. That was Erik Tiart. He's the owner of a website called platinumwealth.co.za. It is a forum where fellow investors can get together and talk about their successes and failures when it comes to investing on the stock market. Erik has written an ebook that is freely available through the website entitled How to Invest the Beginner's Guide. In the book, Erik says that South Africa lacks an investment culture. But thanks to guys like Erik, that is changing. So what my idea was with the ebook is just to give a little bit more easy way to get started with investments. And as soon as they're comfortable, then they can go on to more advanced stuff and go to a financial advisor to get personalized advice. But they, they're also then equipped to ask the right questions. So you've accumulated some money and you're ready to ask the question, where do I invest this money? Based on countless books and several analysts and financial advisors, the very first question you're supposed to ask yourself is, am I completely debtless? Are my living expenses accounted for? Do I have an emergency fund for when I need emergency money? And will I be able to stay afloat if my investments fall flat? If you've answered yes to all these questions, then it's time to invest. But what should we as South Africans be investing in? This leadership must not take advantage of people not knowing what is a dump return and say it's nothing. That is misleading. We owe it to these people who do not understand what is a dump return because of their levels of literacy to explain it to them. For them to understand what does this thing mean, to say it in simple terms, in practical terms, what does this mean to a person who stays in a shack, who wants to own a house in future? So South Africa has been brandished with the tag of junk status. That was Julius Malema begging for information on how junk status actually affects the individual in South Africa. Junk status was brought about because Jacob Zuma shuffled his cabinet and put Malusi Gigaba in as the financial minister, essentially retiring Pravin Gordon. I do intend leading a delegation of um, business people, labor, um, um, various other stakeholders to meet with the ratings agencies and some of the banks. We, we do need to address the perceptions about the, the political stability, the risks and, uncerti and, and, and uncertainties they are talking about, the policy um, uncertainties that they have. But should, should we be investing in South Africa anymore? What do you think? No, you should that? not. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Um, and, and this is not to be funny. This is like, like I'm not trying no, yeah, to... I mean, to uh, just be done all doom and gloom, but but the reality is all is that we are uh, we have been downgraded to junk, and the, the, what that actually entails is 
our government will now pay a premium to to lend more money and and we're not in a position to to be self sustainable so our government has to lend money to ensure this economy uh, keeps spinning and not only does the money the government lend uh, gets uh, 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 more of a, a interest that they have to pay back, but this also affects each and every South African that has debt, and essentially means that less people will have money to buy bread at the end of the day, and more, uh, as, and then that obviously uh, puts pressure on retailers, and then they have to rise their prices to make up, and then before you know it, <laughs> nobody is able to buy milk at the end of the day. So if we can't invest in South Africa, what are our options when it comes to investing offshore? The answer actually lies in Pravin Gordon's budget speech. In his budget speech, he touched on tax-free savings accounts. Now you, right now, can utilize a tax-free savings account. As an individual person, you have 33,000 Rand per year that you can contribute into this tax-free savings account and you have a 500,000 Rand lifetime limit. Once you've reached that, you can't put any more money in it. However, any money that that tax-free savings account grows with based on your investments, that money is completely tax-free and you can take it out at any point. So most analysts and advisors talking about personal individual financial growth say that the best way to utilize the tax-free savings account is to buy something called an exchange traded fund. Uh, can you just give us a, a small description of what an ETF actually is? Yes, uh, um, the, a basic explanation is it's a basket of shares. <laughs> so what an ETF does, um, depending on which one, but let's say the, the uh, one most people will be familiar with called the DBXW, which is actually the, uh, the Deutsche Bank uh, MSI World Trackers. All that it basically does is it's a basket of the top performing shares in each, in, in each country, but heavily weighted to the US. So it's essentially 60% of the US stocks like Apple and Microsoft um, and HP, stuff like that. But, but to explain how an ETF works, it's, it's just a, a company that decides it's going to track the performance of a select group of shares and then um, so without having to go out and buy each individual share, you just buy the ETF and then the, on, the company will invest in each separate one on your behalf. I chose to start investing because I was always told the importance of putting money aside and saving for your future in school and in varsity. And I always found the, the share markets as well as the finance market very, very interesting. So I decided to take a leap and start share trading. I also chose to invest because of the whole cumulative effect. And the sooner that you start, the more time your money has to grow and the effect of reinvesting will have in the, over the future. I like to invest in companies I know and believe people need, for example, food or for example, medicine. I also choose companies where I believe that the management is very good and that has very smart people and that are constantly trying to develop new ways and push the envelope on things. I would definitely recommend um, starting to get involved in share trading, be it in the form of unit trust if you're not as confident to do buying the actual shares yourself and getting somebody to manage your funds, or even be it in the form of tax-free savings because of the whole benefit of not paying tax on interest, dividends, or on capital gains, so you can really see the, the cumulative effect there of reinvestment. But I definitely recommend starting to try buying shares yourself, and if you're not so confident in doing the actual day-to-day -day share trading, just leaving your money in and letting it grow, and as you get more and more confident through doing research, you can actually start to properly share trade. But I definitely recommend just doing that leap and putting some small amounts aside and starting to share trade. That's my buddy Michael Mills. He's a graduate in accounting science and he works for KPMG. We both form part of about a five-man investment club. Traditional investment clubs will usually consist of a few members who put their money into a joint fund 
and then through trial and error and the expertise of its members, decide where to invest the money on the stock market. Our investment club is a little bit different, where we really just share knowledge with each other and certain articles, books, webinars and several other things, all in hopes that we will be sharing information that could make each other a pretty penny. But as you can see, some of these members of the investment club still believe in individual stock picks. Now there's nothing wrong with that, but it's the risk that you take. But at the end of the day, across the board, investment in stocks seems to be the one thing that can put you ahead of everyone else when it comes to investing and growing your money. Here's another member of our investment club. My first experience with shares was through the JSE Stock Exchange Challenge. And it's one of the most satisfying moments of my high school career because you could see instant results. I am still a novice though because I only started recently. And how I select my shares is that I research the company and if I believe that they are really going to do well and grow, that's where I invest. And I also speak to people with the same interests. I just feel it's better to invest in the market because you have a choice of how to grow your money as compared to a bank account. And with the words of John Belfort, I would like to end off by saying, sell me this pen. And we end off with Erik Tiar, the owner of PlatinumWealth.co.za and the man behind the ebook, How to Invest, The Beginner's Guide, who says that the government should be encouraging investors to join an investment club. Uh, my question to you is, would you recommend that guys start an investment club, um, you know, peers themselves to try and get together and give each other the best kind of information, even within their own community? Say that they... they, they they're very in their infancy and they haven't found platinumwealth.co.za yet. Would you say that starting an investment club with your friends is a good idea in South yes. Africa? Yes, yes, 100% yes. I am part of an investment club as well. Um, and, and, and from that club, I've learned more than I can ever learn on, on my own. Um, interesting to note that Platinum Wealth actually has a bunch of hidden sections where people that register an investment club on the forum actually gets access to a hidden, well, it's a hidden forum on the Platinum Wealth Forum where their club manages all their finances and everything, but only the club members can see it. Um, so anyway, that's that's where our club started. But to get back to your point about investment clubs, I, I fully believe that is something that the, the government should actually be pushing through the SABC so because they have the reach, they have the ability to, to make this investment culture a reality by getting people in communities to start investment clubs, even if it's just saving together towards a common goal, like fix the neighborhood bride fund or something. But, but just to get people to think, um, think about saving and think about their money, you know, because when you're an individual, you think, I think I'm going to save a little bit of money, but no, then you see something cool in the shop and you rather go buy that. But if you're part of an investment club, there's a sense of, I don't want to call it accountability because nobody can force you to do this, but you do tend to think a bit different about your money, you know, knowing we have this club goal, we have to set aside a hundred bucks at the end of the month, um, and, and you know why you're setting it aside. And then it, it starts small, you know, it starts with a little four friends saving together and then it ends up you owning a large chunk on the JSE when you retire. So no, I, I, I really, really do believe um, investment clubs needs to be put more in the spotlight.